uh, welcome everybody. My name is Anthony Cooney. And I'm the CEO of Fingal Chamber of Commerce. And we're pleased to be hosting this local area business forum with Fingal County Council. The aim for this virtual series is to give businesses an update on the local authorities' supports and plans for economic development, enterprise and tourism. <clears throat> this webinar will feature an address from Fingal County Council's Chief Executive Amory Farley and a presentation from the Director of Economic Enterprise, Tourism, Cultural Development, Emer Gorman. These briefings will be followed by a Q&A session. If you have any questions for us during the, the, these presentations, they can, you can use the Q&A feature in the Zoom toolbar, and we will do our best to get to them. But first, to address attendees, I would like to invite the Fingal Chamber President, Andrea Malloy, to say a few words. Andrea. Thank you, Anthony, and good morning, everybody. Thank you for joining this morning's local business forum in conjunction with Fingal County Council. As the, largest region, as the region's largest business organization, Fingal Chamber helps businesses of all sizes to grow and develop by providing members with opportunities to influence policy, connect with businesses and professionals, train their workforce, promote their business and trade internationally. The Chamber is committed to promoting local economic development and enhancing the economic prosperity and quality of life across the region, whilst ensuring local businesses have a competitive advantage. The primary services of the Chamber that offers to the members include advocacy and lobbying support, where we liaise with government departments, engage with policymakers and the media, and directly represent on industry and community committees. The Chamber also coordinate, coordinates upskilling and training programmes. This is provided through the Fingal Chamber Skill Net, where we operate and promote subsidised training determined by business needs, customised and delivered locally. Our huge, hugely successful networking and events programme hosts regular government and key stakeholder briefings, a business networking series and a variety of social events. The Fingal Chamber website also has an exclusive member centre, this allows members to network online, profile their business, share news updates, events, job vacancies, and special offers with the business community. Over a year ago, like many, our operations were forced to change, but the Chamber quickly adapted to working with COVID-19. As the Chamber staff moved seamlessly to working virtually for most of our services, we reacted to the new reality by changing our focus to helping businesses survive. Looking ahead, we have lots happening over the coming months. If you are already a Chamber member, I encourage you to check out and join in our upcoming activities, which are listed on the Fingal Chamber website. If you're not yet a Chamber member, you can find out more online at fingalchamber.ie or by contacting a member of our team to find out how membership can benefit your business specifically. I hope you find, find today's event useful and on behalf of the Chamber and myself, I wish you and your business every success in the future. I would like to sincerely thank Fingal County Council Chief Executive Amory Farrelly and Director of Economic Enterprise, Tourism and Cultural Development, Imro Gorman, for joining us today. I'll now hand you back to our host for today, Chief Executive of Fingal Chamber, Anthony Cooney. Thank you. Thanks, Andrea. And uh, moving along, I'd like to pay a warm welcome to Amory Farley, the CEO of the, the local authority. Uh, Amory, the floor is yours. Thanks, Andrea and Anthony, and thank you so much as a chamber for inviting Fingal County Council to speak at today's events. Um, I suppose I'm really pleased to be here. I had a bit of a different start to my role as chief executive of Fingal than I anticipated. And I had certainly expected to be out and about and meeting many of you personally over the last year. But that wasn't to be, and I suppose we've had to adapt as, as circumstances evolved since March of, of 2020. And I always tell the joke when I was saying goodbye to Paul Reid in his speech, I said, because of his new role as chief executive of the HSE, that he would manage to keep Fingal County Council and myself in the news. Little did I realise what would tra transpire last year and how, how much the HSE would be in the, in the news. And clearly, Paul has, has a very difficult job to get on with. 
which I suppose to some extent has allowed Fingal to do what it needs to do. And I suppose if, I want to cover a few topics today. I want to look at COVID and how we've um, evolved to deal with it, both as an organization and for the county itself. Um, I look a little bit at our investment in the county, you know, our infrastructure program, as well as what's happening in the housing area. And then I want to focus specifically on the Fingal Development Plan, which is about to kick off for the next iteration. So our new plan from 2023 is in preparation now, and we're consultation, consulting on the strategic issues um, at the moment. Um, and then lastly, I do want to focus on summer 2021, because I think that's going to be challenging. I think there are many ways we can all work together. And certainly we have a, quite a major program that we're developing both ourselves, but more I think more importantly, in consultation with chambers, um, I suppose, close liaison with government, um, and I know that everybody's anxious to get reopened, so I'd like to spend some time dealing with that. So looking back at COVID, um, I suppose the first thing I'd say is we've been open. You know, we're a frontline service. We've been delivering since day one, um, and it hasn't been without challenge. Like yourselves, there's some of our services that are designated essential, and some more that have to be carried out remotely or from home, um, or we've had to redeploy staff to areas that are of most critical need. We had to move pretty quickly through a what was to be a three-year digital transformation program and have it delivered in three months. And that was completed in June of last year. And the sort of things that delivered is that we now have about 10% of our staff um, coming into the office for the jobs that cannot be done from home. But the rest is working very satisfactorily from home. And that's that's about half of our workforce, what we call, I suppose, the office-based staff. Um, and then separately, we have to plan to have our outdoor work done safely. Um, the digital transformation has delivered for us, I suppose, the likes of a new telephony system that allows, um, in April of this year, for example, took 200,000 calls, telephone calls to the organization from, from people's kitchens table. You know, people doing that service from home and, and, and working right across the county, wherever people live and beyond. Um, it's given us MS teams and I suppose that's how we communicate now. And it's proven very effective for communicating directly between ourselves. But I think more importantly, externally, you know, we're, we're able to meet more regularly um, at a government level um, across the local authorities, um, 31 across the country. Um, and then directly with businesses for pre-planning um, for, for the likes of these business events, webinars, etc. That's not to say we don't want to get back into physical space. And I was saying to Andrea this morning, we hope to be back at events in um, the likes of Andrea's hotel very soon. Um, but it's, it's not to be, I think, for the foreseeable few months at least, but hopefully maybe by year end. Um, we then had to introduce some new services, which um, I suppose were challenging in themselves. Um, I worked closely with EMA, and EMA has led on a lot of the business supports. We worked on the philosophy that if there was a business support for a Fingal business, the most important thing we could do was to get that money into your accounts quickly. So the likes of the restart start grant was planned on that basis. And it's not, it wasn't without its toll on the staff involved. You know, there's a lot of time spent getting that money out quickly. Um, and a lot of staff diverted from other areas to help us do that. Um, so I hope you found it of an efficient service. We certainly tried to make it such. Um, and I suppose with a lot of government programs during the pandemic, the announcement is made and there's no system in place. Um, and the organization that's tasked with running that um, grant aid needs to then move quickly to set up the system and allow you make applications and allow us pay the money out quickly. Um, and I know Emer will deal with that more closely. Um, recreation and the demand on our beaches, our public spaces, on our parks, um, unforeseen, um, has never been so busy before. The likes of Malahide Domain, two million visitors last year. What does that mean for us? I suppose it means more maintenance, it means more um, bins, it means more workforce um, deployed to manage those areas. Um, and it remains a challenge. I mean, there's um, firstly, I'd say um, I recognize 
that young people have a very difficult time at the moment. There's no sports clubs open. They're unlikely to spend all their time in the house with their family. So they're going to congregate on public spaces. So we've been trying to manage that um, sensitively um, while I suppose dealing with some problems such as antisocial behavior. But for the most part, you know, they've behaved well. Um, we've tried to work with them, but litter is our scourge at the moment. And I'm sure you can see that um, and has led to us deciding um, to invest another half a million in bins, um, which is a big contrary to our ethos of climate action, where we want people to be out and about in the county without leaving a trace. But, you know, we're, it's a combination of um, immediate intervention while we try and encourage people to do the right thing. And the other new service we had was the community call. There was a lot of worry that people would be left behind in the early stages of the cocooning, that older people would not have the supports they need. And every organization without fail in the county joined us in the community call, including Fingal Chamber, worked with us as we engage with volunteers to get the likes of groceries and, pharm and pharmacy products delivered directly to households. And we, we again, back to our telephony system, 1,200 calls from individuals were received um, for support during that time. And I, I mentioned it was business as usual, and in terms of infrastructure investment, thankfully, notwithstanding the lockdown last year, we were able to invest 160 million in infrastructure capital projects last year with a plan to invest 230 million this year. Um, you'll know in your own local area, I hope, that um, of some of the projects we're involved in. Um, we are about to appoint an integrated design team for the Swords Cultural Quarter, which that will be an iconic, another iconic building in Swords. More importantly, it'll be a building that will deliver community and social needs for the, the growing population, population of Swords. But you can imagine its site, it's going to be here beside County Hall, just behind where I'm sitting at the moment, close to the castle. So we want it to be a building that's in keeping with its setting um, and something that will reflect the county town of Swords. There'll be a public announcement on that in the coming weeks. Um, in Balbriggan, um, I hope you're aware of the Our Balbriggan project. Very pleased to receive the government support um, in terms of the, the URDF funding of 25 million. Um, again, a lot of work underway. Some of our projects will get on site this year um, and the likes of the Braemore Regional Park, where we're now consulting on the master plan. Again, we're just asking for everybody's engagement, help us to do the right thing, plan the right project and to make sure we're doing what's needed for the town. Um, right across the county, um, I, I won't go through every town in, in North County Dublin, but I hope you can see our presence. Um, our capital project, our programme is extensive. Um, we, there's, there's some small projects everywhere. The larger projects um, take time um, to develop and they're found across the county. But we're trying to deal with all of the infrastructure needs um, and, def and dealing with our government partners where they need to invest. Um, I suppose the most exciting project that we're engaged in right now and we're cons consulting on the, the routes for that project will be the Fingal Coastal Way. I think what we've learned through the pandemic is how special the coast is in Fingal, how important it is to the residents. And the Fingal Coastal Way is a 34 kilometre route from Donabate up to north of Balbriggan. And when that is delivered, it will transform tourism. Um, and when I say when that is delivered, it's a project that is now in our capital program, programmed out to, to the delivery stage. Um, like, like you all, when we go through a project, it has to be designed and planned and meet the bar that it will secure planning permission and that careful work is underway at the moment. But ultimately, as I'm looking at the provision of public toilets, when I'm looking at casual trading, for example, when I'm looking at where... Um, facilities will be needed in the coming years. I'm thinking of the Fingal Coastal Way and the number of visitors it will bring from outside of the county into the county and the impact that will have on our coastal towns and villages, which I think will be phenomenal. Um, I mentioned housing and I think it's important just to focus on that at the moment. It's still a challenge for us. Um, we were pleased that there's some free up in the rental market as a result of COVID. 
and um, that has allowed a lot of our homeless families to be accommodated through state supports and um, that is not as acute as it was although sim still some problem there but we do have a lot of housing in the planning we have um some large sites in the county that are owned either by ourselves or by the land development agency and over those six sites we have um, the planning of three and a half thousand units underway um, and again with one of those projects coming close to the announcement of, uh, um, of the project itself which will move to planning this year um, and that's the project in Donabate. So we're moving through all of those lands and the, those that are owned by the Land Development Agency, there have been some planning applications lodged in relation to infrastructure development and again some housing applications likely in the coming year. In terms of direct social housing provision, we have a number of small sites right across the county um, and we have 450 housing units either in on site in construction as COVID restrictions allow or which will get on site during this year. And just to mention that we've given over 6,000 um, families a home, um, either through our own social housing stock, approved housing body housing stock, or through um, leasing arrangements with the private sector. So the last year, that's the number of families, six, over 6,000 that received a home through social housing supports. And my own ethos for all infrastructure development is we work together, we do more. Um, so I see it as a combination of us delivering directly ourselves, approved housing bodies delivering, and also the private sector doing what they can do well, which is housing delivery. So when we work together, we can get more um, solutions in place. I said I would mention summer 2021, and we're all anxious that we get businesses reopen. Um, I know from speaking with Anthony and Andrea that that's top of your agenda. Um, and certainly with my work through the City and County Managers Association, where I chair the Economic and Business Committee, I meet with all the key stakeholders. There's a meeting scheduled today in relation to how the reopening might happen, and what supports local government can give businesses during the summer. And that's at a government level. Um, I know Chambers Ireland are anxious to, to, for us to work together as well. So just to reassure people that work is underway. The unknown is the precise date as to when this reopening will happen, but it will happen and it's coming in a matter of weeks. What we're doing ourselves, I suppose, we've been operating at summer levels in terms of the number of people out and about in the county since January, really. Um, so we've had to, I suppose, work accordingly. And I mentioned our investment in bins, that's well underway. Um, right across the county, some of our more urban areas, city fringe areas, coastal areas, busier than others. Um, and again, trying to um, intervene with some permanent and temporary solutions in that area. Um, we are doing a significant upgrade of many of our public toilets and we have a half a million investment in additional facilities underway at the moment. And um, they're in our busiest spots. Um, some new toilet provisions in our in our regional parks and um, but then in some of our coastal areas we do need to enhance the provision there and it's not an easy thing to do but we have a plan in place for this summer um, you may have heard of the town center first which is again a project i'm working on across the local government sector and um, but also with government it's been led by the department of um our own department department of housing and working with the Department of Rural and Community Affairs. And it's about what do we need to do to revitalize our town centers? Um, and there's, I suppose that, that work is well underway, but some of the work is about um, returning more of the public space um, to business use. Um, the outdoor dining scheme that's um, live at the moment, that's available for businesses where you think there's a public space that you can benefit from and you can apply to use that. But there be there, there's some imminent supports for summer 21, but they're framed in a longer term strategy where we want to look at the revitalization of all our town centers and get them to be hubs of activity again. So there'll be immediate supports announced, but just remember that it is part of a long term strategy. Um, 
government want to look at city and town recovery plans and some of that will be for summer 21 and more of it beyond. Um, we ourselves have set up an active travel unit. We do believe that um, we would like to see less cars in the centre of towns, more people and more people trading successfully. Um, we are looking at pedestrian and cycling routes, some already in place, more to be delivered. Um, and again, we have established a team to work directly on that issue, to form connections where connections are missing, you know, create the shortest route to the town centre, to the school, to the business, and trying to make it easier for people to live and stay in their towns. We are, we're seeing a bit of an uplift in many of our towns and villages with the amount of people working from home. That has helped in terms of the people out and about in our towns. I'm hopeful that, hoping that will translate into business when you get reopened. Um, I don't see why it, why it shouldn't. Um, there is a longer term remote working strategy by government. So I think it is here to stay in some form, whether it's a hybrid or whether um, it's a full-time remote working. But either way, if people are living and working in the place that you have your business, it has to be to your benefit. Um, I'd like to hear from you what other supports you think are needed for summer 2021 and I can deal, we can deal with that directly as a council but I can also deal with it through my engagement with stakeholders so happy to hear any comments you have um, as we move to questions and answers later. Um, but generally that's just a flavour of what's happening in the county and um, lots of more information, a very strong adaptable workforce I'm very pleased to say, very strong council that has supported us with all of our projects and um, that has allowed us um, navigate the planning system for many of them and that has helped us with the consultation you know brought that direct connection to the local communities um, so that's how we've been able to make progress and I expect to continue to do to even more work this year and looking forward to you and I suppose to, to ourselves getting back to a bit more normality whether it's a new normal or not, I think that's yet to be seen. So listen, thank you. And I'll hand you back to Anthony. Th thank you very much, Anne-Marie, uh, for that very extensive presentation. It's fantastic, really. And uh, now I'd like to um, hand you over to Imor Gorman. Uh, to Great. Um, look, thanks very much, um, Anthony, and thanks, Andrea. Um, my name is Emer O'Gorman. Um, I'm the Director of Economic Enterprise and Tourism Development and Cultural Development as well, as Anne-Marie had, and Anthony had mentioned. Um, I'm with Fingal just about three years now in this role. Um, and as Anne-Marie articulated, we've never had a more challenging time. Um, but it's actually helped us, I suppose, be more creative and inventive in our solutions um, for working with business and how we've been able to adapt and pivot our services to meet the ever-emerging needs of business. So what I'm going to do this morning is I'll run through a very brief presentation, um, hopefully highlighting some of the very specific economic interventions and what we're doing in economic development that impact directly on you as chamber members, um, as, and you as residents in Fingal, and, and, and you as people that are enjoying um, what the county has to offer in terms of its tourism proposition. So you just bear with me now while I share my screen. Hopefully you can all see that now. So um, I'll start off on the business supports, um, supporting business in Fingal. As you know, um, there's a currently a rates waiver scheme in operation, um, and it's great the government have committed to funding that for another period of time. I think that's been a really important um, intervention for businesses directly. You know, it's kept helped to keep, I suppose, businesses surviving um, it has helped that so businesses haven't shut down necessarily and um, while the doors might be closed people have been working away in the background we've also we were pioneering we were pioneering pioneering the restart grant scheme um, as you would have known so initially at the original scheme we made payments of seven and a half million to one point or one thousand five hundred odd um, businesses within the Fingal area that was a new, completely new scheme that was introduced by government as a direct support to business. And for me personally and my team, we had to pivot 
um, staff were reassigned and in fairness to them, they really took up the mantle and worked really hard on it. As Anne-Marie mentioned, our key deliverable in this was to get the money flowing to business as quick as possible uh, with as little uh, barriers or you know, opposition to get it out as quick as possible because we saw it as a real lifeblood to business. Then on top of that, we had the Restart Plus grant scheme announced, which then further aided by to the tune of nearly 20 million to businesses again in Fingal. And I think the beauty of the Restart grant scheme was that it wasn't um, specific. You could use it for whatever you needed within your business. You know, it wasn't prescriptive. So I hope that businesses that were eligible availed of it and were able to use it and put it to good use while you're in survival mode, I suppose, in some very, very troubling times in the last 12 months. Currently, the Small Business Assistance Scheme is out at the moment. Today is the closing date on it. Um, so I just wanted to be conscious of that. Um, that again provides some direct support to businesses, those that aren't in receipt of CRSS. It's a small support, it's a 4,000 euro grant now and a second payment of 4,000 euro um, in a couple of months time, but the closing date is today. So I would encourage anybody that thinks they might be able to avail of it to visit our website, fingo.ie forward slash business and all the data is there for it. There's an online application form, fairly similar to the restart grant process in terms of application. And it's the same team dealing with the queries. So there's a continuity of service there. So they know an awful lot of the businesses that are coming through. Um, so there's some of the most direct supports that we have um, been putting out for business, um, which have been sponsored through local, through central government. I'm going to just move this to a slideshow because it's not, it must have worked for me properly first, sorry. That's better, right, <laughs> sorry about that. Okay. As one of the soft supports that we had produced in Fing Fingal in uh, 2020 as a direct response to COVID was the Fingal in it together. What we were hearing on the ground from the multitude of businesses was that, you know, people wanted to help each other out. Businesses were very conscious of their neighbouring business. They were very conscious of the impact of the queue outside their coffee shop on the pharmacy next door. So my team got together and we decided like we'll, we'll try and leverage that and leverage that goodwill and that sense of camaraderie in our towns and villages in the business community. So working with the Chambers of Commerce and working with other partners and other business groupings throughout our towns and villages, we established our Fingal In It Together Charter. You would have seen probably around our um, shop fronts, um, office buildings, our little decal that we have of uh, the Fingal In It Together Charter. So 253 businesses have signed up to that so far. All it does, I suppose, it's a community of the willing. It's, a, it's recognizing that people are all trying to do business together, recognizing the pressures that everybody is currently on um, as the restrictions are in place, um, recognizing the impact that um, people being outside your business may have on the business next door that might be a service provider. So the Think All In It Together Charter is open to businesses that are service providers, um, as in coffee shops, uh, the hospitality sector. It's also equally applicable to the bank, to the solicitor's office. And I suppose it's, it's about, I suppose, being mindful of your neighbours and doing what you can to help each other. We had a really good example of one of the businesses here in Swords on the Main Street, where they sourced their Perspex screening from a local supplier, not 100 yards up the road. So it's little things like that. It's giving a bit of business to your neighboring business and you know reaping the rewards of that and then those reciprocal arrangements. So as part of our Fingal In Together program, we have an online presence on um, our council website on fingal.e. All, all of our supports are on the business page um, on our website. It allows these businesses, anybody that's registered with us to have an online presence um, and just to really showcase what you have to offer. Then as we moved into the Christmas period, we obviously recognized that we were still um, in a very, very difficult um, period. So we produced brochures and a video, a suite of videos uh, highlighting what our towns and villages had to offer, what businesses had to offer, really buying into that whole shop local sentiment that the public were demonstrating. You know, anytime there was a reopening, our businesses were very busy, uh, particularly, I suppose, um, the tourism and hospitality trade who have, I suppose, suffered probably the most to have the longest closures. Um, and as well for retail businesses, you'll see the small boutiques, 
um, you know, small toy shops, people, residents, visitors, all very much focused in on the shop local. So for the thing all in together for Christmas element, we weren't able to run our Christmas market as we would normally would run, um, which would be a showcase of all of our artisan products, our uh, food producers in the North County, um, some really fantastic products. So we moved it into an online environment where we had 120 artisan producers selling directly to the public through our online portal. It was completely free, um, no overhead. We worked with the businesses to try and again, showcase um, their products and offerings. It didn't matter if they had an online presence before this or not. It was just listing, um, like we had one guy, he was a wood turner, listing his phone number and a couple of photographs of his products and he got great business out of it. Whereas other businesses were more sophisticated. They might have Facebook pages or Instagram pages and we had direct click through to those. And as well as that, last year, we produced a number of marketing brochures um, for every town and village in the county, really to demonstrate to people that live in our towns and villages and in the county of what is on your doorstep. Um, I don't think pre-COVID we really realised the wealth of businesses and the wealth of offering that Fingal towns have um, for our residents. And very simply, a very simple map highlighting some kind of some of the key features on the map for each town um like for swords it was swords castle um you know where the bleeper bikes were located where there was a, a walking route along the river all sorts of things and then a directory of all the businesses and again we worked very very closely with the chamber of commerce and producing that to make sure that we had the names of businesses right um and those are still available online they were delivered to every household in the county so uh, obviously by for Swords, it was the Swords area, for Rush, the residents in the Rush area. And just, again, it brought home to people that live in the county who might have been traveling into the city center every day for work and not realizing that there was a beautiful bakery at the end of their street or on the main street, or not realizing that um, the local garden center is able to um, you know, do up a bouquet of flowers for you or whatever it might be. So I think that whole work from home environment changed the way our villages are functioning, changed the way our towns are functioning. And as Anne-Marie had mentioned, some of our businesses are seeing you know, increased business because of that, despite the pandemic. So building on that, we have a number of, I suppose, direct stimulus packages that we have run ourselves within Fingal and funded ourselves through Fingal. You may have been aware of the Parkland Partner Scheme that we ran last summer. Um, really, that was, I suppose, it, it clicked two boxes for us. It helped move the active travel agenda uh, forward, and it also provided um, safe dining space or outdoor hospitality space for business. As we know, most businesses last year and as was continued this year, if it, they were open at all, it was only for outdoor dining or for outdoor facilities for click and collect as such. So Parklets have gone in with in partnership with business. Generally, we try to work with two or three businesses together in a location. We, we will put in the infrastructure, which up to now has kind of been a wooden decked um, infrastructure. The businesses then sign an MOU with Fingal County Council where they maintain and look at after the space. They do the COVID compliance checks if it's a restaurant or and such and make sure it's clean and tidy and secure it in the evening time. We This week we will be advertising the Parkland Partner Scheme for 2021, recognising that summer 2021 again is going to be very challenging for business. It'll again, it'll be, it'll serve two purposes. It'll help take some of the cars out of our towns and villages, which then enables, I suppose, a more comfortable experience for the residents of our county, you know, be it if they're shopping, moving through um, the space with children or, um, you know, walking through with bikes or with uh, elderly, elderly family members, you know, it just makes our towns and villages far more accessible. All of the parklets that we put in last year are at grade with the curb, so there's no kind of step up or anything like that, so they are accessible to people. They worked really well, so I'd encourage you if you have um, hospitality type business that you might be interested in a parklet partnership we'll be launching it I'd say probably if not today it'll be tomorrow and um, we'll run it through our Twitter and our Facebook um, pages and we will have a dedicated email address on an online application for that. In tandem with that then last year and we're running it again this year we did a shop front improvement and painting scheme very very simple small support making a contribution towards the provision of paint um, or um, 
you know, a grant towards shuttering or signage or whatever it might be um, for your local business. The conditions of the scheme are that it has to be, I suppose, on a main street, you know, on, on a fronting out onto a street. Um, so it's, I suppose it's to try and improve the vista of our towns and villages. I mean, a lot of our towns and villages have adopted their own kind of paint schemes and they'll have colour, you know, colour palettes that they've agreed amongst themselves, which is fantastic to see. But sometimes, you know, I mean, particularly now when businesses are struggling, every little support that we can give we feel is helpful. So again, that is um, live will be live um, online application, fairly straightforward and a very quick turnaround. That's one thing I suppose we pride ourselves on in economic development is that we try to turn around these schemes really quickly so that they are impactful. Um, like it would be our intention that the parklets, parklets would be in place again by June um, to allow, we're hoping for a, a reopening in June, uh, July, August for the for the summer period and to allow that outdoor dining space. Amory mentioned um, our outdoor dining scheme and um, we're running this in partnership with Falter Ireland. Um, again, it's open and any any business that provides um, a dining experience to the public. So it's not open to members only clubs per se, but if you have a golf club whose restaurant is open to the public, you're eligible. If you're a hotel whose restaurant um, obviously is open to the public, you're eligible. So it's supposed, again, it's not too prescriptive a scheme. Um, Again, it's a grant of up to four thousand euro um, based on vouched expenditure, and the beauty of this scheme is that it dates back to April twenty twenty. So, if you spent any money in the last year on outdoor uh, parasol seating, um, barriers, anything like that, you can you can claim a grant for that. And it's again, it's running until. Um, the closing date on it is the thirtieth of September of this year. So, again, it lets you flow through the summer period. The one thing about it is, I suppose, you have to spend up front and it's vouched expenditure, vouched, vouched receipts that we have. Going back to kind of shop local and I suppose a lot of the supports that we have, um, our Leo office, again, had a shop fingal initiative um, where we have print and radio advertising. I'll, I'll come back to Leo, the Leo office and what they offer in a moment. A lot of digital promotion. One of the very successful a piece of business that we picked up in the last 12 months was a young entrepreneur who designed a shoplocal.irish um, app. So this was a geocoded mobile enabled app that allowed me as a consumer type in um, fresh fish, for example, and it would geolocate to within 5k of my location businesses that were selling fresh fish or could deliver fish to your home. So I suppose particularly as we were in the first lockdown last year, it really um, helped businesses just, you know, establish that whole click and collect uh, model that they have. Um, to talk about Leo, I suppose briefly, the Leo office has been integral um, to helping small business survive um, in the last 12 months and has a really important role to play in the next 12 months and beyond. Within, I suppose, a week or two of the first lockdown, um, the office completely pivoted into an online environment. And one of their major supports are the trading online vouchers. So these are a voucher towards getting you into the digital marketplace and getting you um, getting your business an e-commerce platform. And last year, um, we had close to a thousand trading online vouchers issued, whereas in the previous 12 months, we had 50. So it just shows you the difference between, you know, the impact that COVID has really had on business and that transition to the online environment um, and businesses feeling that they had to move to that space. So the Leo offices as well, um, I suppose what has been kind of there under the surface for the full 12 months of last year and is continuing are our Brexit supports kind of got lost in the noise of COVID, an awful lot going on, I suppose, with COVID specific supports. But in the meantime, Brexit was kind of creeping up on us. And um, so the Leo office ran a large number of seminars and webinars and, you know, getting your business Brexit ready um, from tax and customs advice, you know, so if you were a business that was trading um, on both sides of the border, really, really invaluable advice there. Also, the, the Leo office is continuing to run out its mentoring and training programs. Um, again, really hugely subscribed to um, all online. Um, there are there are some one to one mentoring sessions still. Um, what I'm finding is as soon as we advertise um, a program, a training program, it's booked out within an hour or two, and then we have a huge uptake. We can only see, I suppose, the success of our Enterprise Week this year. 
um, we had some close to 3,000 participants over the week. Um, and I know um, Fingal Chamber hosted a couple of the events as well. Hugely, hugely successful. So I think our business community have really embraced uh, the online digital space. Um, it's really transformed how we do business. Um, I'm, I mean, like Anne-Marie, I'm looking forward to the time where we can get back and meet people in person because there's nothing like having that one-on-one uh, -on -one conversation and just having that chat with somebody about what we can do to help. But in the absence of that, the online space, I think we have, we're providing good service there. And I think my team in the Leo office have been, uh, provided a phenomenal service there. Um, again, some of you may be aware of the Fingal Enterprising Women's Network. Um, that moved again to an online space that used to have a quarterly event that now holds a monthly event, which are booked out. They're hugely popular, really, really busy. And I suppose it's just like-minded business people getting together to share ideas, listen to a keynote speaker, and then to share ideas and have breakout chats and just discuss where they're going with their businesses and the challenges that they're facing and really recognizing that there are a lot of challenges. Another element of um, what we do in, in, in the department is tourism. Um, and tourism is, I suppose, a key indi uh, economic indicator and driver for Fingal. Um, I think one in four jobs in Fingal are in the tourism and hospitality sector, which is a huge amount, either directly or through the services that support that industry. Um, it's been an exceptionally challenging time for that sector, um, with no doubt about it. Um, part of our, I suppose, supports are encouraging active travel. Anne-Marie mentioned the Fingal Coastal Way. That will absolutely be transformative um, for Fingal. I don't think there will be a greenway like it in the country that could rival it in the country. You know, we would be talking about cycling and pedestrian infrastructure. And on one side, you'll have the sea, beautiful, clean beaches, um, towns and villages and then our heritage properties as well you know there's nothing like it in the country you know there really won't be so it's a fantastic proposition that we do have we do have to work hard at our tourism um proposition sometimes we get lost a little bit in the dublin brand the whole of dublin approach which is we're signed up to with fall to ireland and the dublin and I mean, the tagline for dublin is dublin surprising by nature we are the nature element of all of that. We have our thriving towns and villages, but we do have wide, wide open spaces. Um, and last year, um, as some of you may be aware, we ran a very specific marketing campaign uh, to promote Fingal as a destination um, for, I suppose, people within the greater Dublin area as a day trip uh, destination. And then again, um, for staycationers to encourage people like, you know, you can do the city break but you also have so much more on your doorstep and really articulating what we have to offer. We have a number of social media platforms um, that we use to um, promote and showcase the businesses and ourselves uh, and what we have to offer in terms of tourism. Um, our Love Fingal Dublin page has huge following. And then I suppose our Dublin Coast and Fields is a relatively new proposition, um, but that really highlights the foodie element. Um, so it ties in our agri-food sector plus the food tourism piece, which are hugely, hugely important to Fingal and becoming more important to um, consumers and residents. People want to know where did the potato come from? Did it come from the field in Rush? Because you know anybody that grew up in and around Dublin will remember um, the fields and fields of potatoes um, in Rush Scaries. We you know that bread basket of Fingal and of the country really. And it's, so it's marrying what the business has, you know, what the hospitality business has to local produce, and that's really resonates and I suppose it would have culminated in the past in flavours of Fingal and you know big showcasing of our major producers like Keelings like uh, Taylor's and Lusk you know uh, like Kyo's so many really fantastic food businesses um, in the county and just showcase those I mean this year in terms of driving our, our tourism proposition we moved very much into an online environment um, you will have seen a lot of our lighting up of our public buildings um, you know, iconic buildings lit up um, specifically for the Christmas period. We had really nice imagery and um, Halloween as well, trying to animate our towns and villages try in a safe way to, you know, to allow the public to enjoy them in a safe way. But what what was really successful about those was people sharing the images. I mean, well, gosh, yeah, I must come back and visit Swords Castle uh, when it reopens or I must come look at Braemore Castle. Um, or at Gillen or wherever it may be, you know, so that kind of word of mouth, the ambassador, the brand ambassador that we have um, within our county and just 
selling on the experience really you know so building on i suppose the, the greenway we have with fall to ireland the coastal development plan which is again um be new informational signage uh, working along the coast and again that link beyond Fingal Greenway, it's a coastal plan, so it's not necessarily a greenway. So beyond Fingal, it'll go through the city, through the Docklands and on out to Greystones. So it'll, again, it'll give uh, the tourist or the resident alike uh, the opportunity to learn and experience what all of our beautiful coastal towns and villages have to offer. On the broader, I suppose, economic development role that we have here in Fingal, we're involved in a number of networks, I suppose, for want of a better term. Um, a lot of you would have attended recently the launch of the Dublin Belfast Economic Corridor on the 24th of March. Um, Fingal are one of eight local authorities involved in this network, um, along with DCU and the University of Ulster. It's a really important um, network that's just getting um, off the ground really. I suppose a lot of work has been going on for the last number of years in the background, getting ready to launch, which we have now done. Um, it really will see that whole corridor transform, looking, you know, trying to leverage um, the businesses that are located along the corridor, looking at clustering, looking at skills development, seeing where we can learn from our neighbours, seeing how we can partner with our neighbouring local authorities to drive forward investments along the corridor. But it's not just about physical infrastructure, it's not just about the business locating, it's about those conversations and that stakeholder engagement. And at the moment we're working on our engagement plan now, um, which we'll bring to our next um, student group meeting. So that we'll start to reach out, have that direct engagement with the likes of the Chambers of Commerce, with other business interest groups, with other stakeholders um, that have something to say and a really valuable voice. Because up to now, I suppose we've been kind of focused on what the local authorities can do together, but we recognise that there's very much strength amongst the Chamber membership and what business can tell us about what they need. I mean, from, from my point of view, it's a huge opportunity for Fingal. Fingal has a huge stretch of the corridor within the county, um, and namely in the around the Stevenstown area. Um, but it does, it stretches all the way down to the M50 belt and our lands in Damastown and all around the Dublin Enterprise Zone as well. So it's about looking, you know, at our plans in tandem with, I suppose, the, the review of the development plan is timely with the corridor and looking at the regional, spatial, and economic strategies and that whole element of, um, developing growth, developing capacity, skills and clustering and, you know, employment centres. And I think there's been a really big shift um, to remote and digital working. We're seeing um, a demand for remote working facilities. We have three enterprise centres that are very busy. Some of them have pivoted and moved some of their space into remote working spaces. Um, as part of our work through the Strategic Policy Committee that the Fingal Chamber um, by Anthony I represented on and um, we're doing an audit of what remote or digital workspaces are available in the county because there are a number of players in this field and um, there's private sector there's public sector you know there's a mix and um, so we're trying to kind of um, provide a map a heat map I suppose and see where the gaps are that'll inform our broadband rollout program recently or we're expecting this week an announcement um, through town and village on the broadband broadband connection points so this will inform that we look to see where are those plug and play locations needed so the whole time what we're trying to do is you know what we do i suppose we don't we don't work in isolation in economic development you know we would all we're always reaching out and uh, listening to our stakeholders listening to um our sister departments here in fingal to learn you know kind of what's coming down the track from their side and how can we stitch it all together to make it into a holistic offering back to business and back to the community in general. You will be aware as well that we would have launched a sustainable Fingal um, brochure and programme last year, which is looking at the circular economy um, for business, looking at how your business can transition into low carbon, um, you know, small measures. So we had a couple of um, videos, testimonial videos, exemplars of where businesses have transitioned. So we have a guide there for business um, and that's run through our office here in partnership with the climate action side of things. Um, we were the first local authority in the country to develop a, a skill strategy a couple of years ago. We're now moved into an implementation phase of that and uh, Siobhan Kinsler chairs that, chairs that implementation group as you, you 
most of you will probably know Siobhan. So that's kind of, it's gotten very uh, focused, very output uh, focused and outcome focused. And that's again, is about bridging the gaps. It's about looking at what we have, looking at what employers need, looking at what our third level institutes are providing. Um, like announcements by Minister Harris recently about um, apprenticeship programs and looking at all of that and seeing how that sits into what Fingal wants to offer and what businesses need um, to fill those employment roles. I'm going to, if you don't mind, I'm going to sh share very briefly uh, just a little video that we have um, of an invest in Fingal, um, which I think is kind of just sums up, I suppose, a lot of what we try to do in the county. If, if we have time to do that, Anthony. Hopefully it'll work for me. That, that's uh, my bit. I probably went on a bit too long. I'm very sorry about that. Uh, just when I, when I get going, I get a bit passionate about it. And um, but look, that video, I suppose, at the end, I suppose, it just shows our outward ambition, you know, and what we do when we market the county um, within Ireland and beyond and further afield. So, look, thank you very much for your time. Happy to take any questions. Okay, thank thank you very much, Emer. Um, we have a couple of questions, quite a few questions actually. There's, there's quite a number actually uh, pertain to the outdoor dining grant, uh, which is just recently launched by Fingal County Council, um, particularly around how soon can those who've applied uh, hope to access the grant? What's your sort of turnaround time? Yeah, I suppose we're intending, I suppose, to have people paid within three weeks is our kind of um, our SLA that we have at the moment. Um, it really depends, I suppose, the outdoor dining grant scheme, um, it serves two functions. So if you have a premises and you're going to use the furniture or you have used the furniture on, within your own footprint. So if you had a, yard, you know, a car park at the back or space at the front that is in your ownership and you're putting the furniture there, it's much, it's quick, you know, it's, it's straightforward. If you're intending to put uh, furniture into the public realm, so out onto the footpath on the street, and you don't have a street furniture application, um, the two have to be done in tandem. So that generally, I suppose, it for us here, we get the application in. We have a working group with our colleagues in um, our operations department who look after the street furniture license. So we will we forward them the application. We have an on-site visit. Um, to make sure it's, the location is suitable and then the grant can be paid. So we're doing it as quick as possible. We have a team established here again, um, repurposed some of my event staff um, are looking at this because they know the businesses, they know the ground um, and then the working group with our colleagues in ops to turn them around quickly. But we do hope to have from application to final payment, three weeks max. Excellent, thank you. One other issue on that, a number of questions are came up in relation to um, some people have said they've bought some street furniture over the last year and can they apply? Yeah, the beauty of this scheme is that it um, is post-dated, so it goes back to April 2020. So anything that you may have purchased since April, um, April the 1st last year, up until the 30th of September this year is eligible. Um, once you have a receipt, um, you, you can make a claim for that. Yeah. 
Okay. Thank you very much. The, one of the other items that came up in relation to um, uh, the, 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 the you, we mentioned earlier about the remote working audit facility and uh, for, for some private companies. And there are there are company organizations popping up around the place. Um, a part of what they're doing is providing remote working facilities. Is there anywhere where they can link in with the local authority and on that? Is there a, uh, an email address, uh, one of your people there? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so our, our general e um, email address is ecomdev at fingol.ie. So anybody, um, I suppose, on the foot of this, if they have any specific queries or want to let us know of their services, certainly um, if they send an email to that address. As I said, it was kind of after our last uh, Strategic Policy Committee meeting um, a couple of weeks ago, where it was decided that we would con conduct this audit. So work is starting on that. So it'd be really important for us to capture um, particularly private sector um, remote working facilities that are there in the county, and we'd be happy to have those conversations. Okay, and uh, go, going back earlier, we spoke about the number of people who work in Fingal, either directly or indirectly related to tourism. A lot of the questions are coming out in that sector now. One of them actually is the: uh, Are there any other? Are there any specific targeted supports for wet pubs? Because you know the outdoor dining facility doesn't apply to them, and. Uh, you know, somebody's got a wet pub that's closed for well over a year at this stage. So is there anything specific, maybe not now or maybe in the near future? Well, through our, our own, I suppose, schemes that we could offer, I mean, the shop front scheme, you know, the painting scheme, we, you know, that they would be eligible for that um, in, in terms of Fingal direct supports. Um, but from government, I suppose, um, we're, 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 we don't... We, I suppose we pass on, I suppose, what's given to us. I don't know if Anne-Marie, if you're aware of what else might be, is there for business? For um, the I guess so far it's been the rights waiver and the restart grant um, and the CRSS at the moment. So um, I do anticipate there'll be some type of support announced for summer, but um, I don't know for sure on that. There's no details announced. Um, and again, I do envisage the so summer is going to be a lot about outdoor um, business and outdoor I suppose, recreation. So again, I'm 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 not sure whether there'll be something or and I think there very well may be around that outdoor space if that's available to a facility or a premises. Um, but that's the type of work that's been looked at now. So um, certainly, if I have any more information, I'll feed it back through the chamber. Uh, thanks, Anne-Marie. Um, some of the other ones, are the relation to Fingal Coastal, the Coastal Way. Uh, one very specific question about the Hearst Road and Donabate between uh, probably Listen Hall there and uh, down into Donabate. Is, is that part of the plan to upgrade that, given the numbers of people that are uh, going to new places like Newbridge? Because it is, um, I'd say for a cyclist, it's, um, it's a bit scary, I suppose would be the term. <laughs> Um, well, yes, um, our development plan definitely wants to, as provided for a project in that area, I suppose more recently the, the national authorities associated with Metro are looking at that, that Liston Hall Junction, so um, the answer is yes, it's not associated with the Coastal Way project, but it is um, being looked at because of the combination of projects in that area. Yeah. Um, maybe one of the other questions that's, that's come up in relation to uh, going back again to home working or hub working. Um, I'm not sure whether it's yourself, Amory, or Emer. Um, it may even be a national government issue. But one of the, uh, the the people on the call here asked a question specifically about scaries and the provision of broadband and not public broadband. I know we've done that, and the chamber would have done it in collaboration with Fingal County Council. But for Home broadband, apparently there's only 100 megs available in Skerries, uh, is what we're led to believe, if there's um, a, a, a national issue. We do have a broadband officer in the council, so I'd be happy to take details of that query and get Ashley to make direct contact. Um, the National Broadband Scheme, obviously, is, is the main project for the country. But Ashley would be aware of any imminent developments, so happy to, to go back directly on that. Yeah, and uh, but the one point, uh, given that uh, if, if uh, somebody can't get the email address of uh, Fingal County Council, you can come to us directly either, 
which is info at fingallchamber.ie, and we'll feed them through to you afterwards. If somebody has some questions afterwards, or even something more specific about what they've asked. Um, I'm conscious of the time. Uh, we've got, sorry, one second. Um, the, the other question relating to litter um, and the 500,000 euros invested in provision of litter bins and obviously collecting the litter bins, is there, that's just, we call it globally across Fingal. Obviously there are hotspots where more people go, you need more bins, unfortunately, but that's the world we live in. Um, is there a, a sort of a draft plan or something that can be laid out to say to people, put on the website to say, this is where they're going? Um, well, I suppose the, the first thing I'd say is the solution to litter is not bins, um, which is a okay. contradiction in itself. Yeah. Um, the solution is to litter is it's an offence and it shouldn't happen in the first place. I wish it was only 500,000 we were spending to, in dealing with litter. It's multiples of that. That's in terms of supplementing our bin provision in the county, where there is already um, more of a supply in areas that are tourist hotspots than, than others. So, um, the answer is, I suppose we're spending more and more money both in terms of staff and in infrastructure provision for bins. We are talking to our businesses to see what, what how we can work together to reduce the amount of packaging. Um, so it's really a work in progress, but I suppose I look at it as a euro spent on picking up litter as a euro wasted in the county where, where that money could be better spent in improving our infrastructure and other things, but it's the reality that we're living in at the moment. And I accept it, I suppose, as a consequence of COVID where people are outdoors more. So, but I wouldn't like to see um, us continually having to roll out more and more bins because ultimately, you know, it, it's not good for the environment and it's it's not the answer. And very often the bin isn't, isn't full, although there's litter beside it, you know, so. Um, and that would be my, my comment on that. And I, I think I think we need to work very closely together to try and prevent it as being a scourge in the county. Yeah, thank you. Um, one of the items that came up as well was that with the amount of people moving around and uh, currently, and I think we alluded to it well before this call, that um, it's welcome that you know, Fingal have, have decided to invest in the provision of public uh, toilet facilities because it's it's becoming an issue for some of the businesses. I can see it on the the uh, Q and A's here now uh, that you know that there's people moving around. The facilities are not what they probably should be at this point in time. But nobody foresaw the amount of people who would be moving around if you went back a year ago. And uh, so you, you might just let us know the, the, you're investing a significant amount of money in, in I think it's a half million euros in the short term. Um. Yeah, I uh, half a million euros in the matter of weeks. Um, there's associated with the, the coastal way, for example, we need to look at um, a much more significant investment. Uh, yes, there's no doubt businesses were missed because um, that is typically um, has been the solution. Some years ago, you couldn't put a public toilet in a in a local area because people would not want it. Want it um, I know I'm working with my co colleagues across local government to kind of look at multi-use um, areas. So where there's a public building and a toilet, you know, have that available as much as possible um, during the busy hours of visitors to a, a local area. Um, and then the provision of, of more public toilets, which obviously will need to come with a maintenance regime to make sure that they're, that they're high quality. So there's we we weren't ready and um, I don't think any local authority was in terms of the amount of outdoor activity no one anticipated without the the support of people buying their coffee and using the facilities at the same time as opposed to buying the coffee and, and walking away and um, so the there's more work to be done there and um, we're trying to catch up as quickly as we can we've been planning for summer 21 since the autumn um, no more than yourselves there's planning requirements and, and other things to be taken account of. But um, yes, yeah, some significant work to happen in weeks um, on, on that issue. That's great, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, we've got a, a number of other uh, queries and questions in here. And uh, but what we do is we, we'll relay them back directly to uh, Fingal County Council. We can see them here, we'll save them off. I'm just conscious of time. Um, what generally happens, we, we advertise something, finish at 10, 
uh, people have it blocked off in our diary. So, um, I, and it's not a live event where we can say, put your hand up and ask a question now. So we have the questions in, we'll save them off if there's some of them not answered and, uh, and we'll come back to people. But finally, I'd just like to say um, on a note of thanks, I want to thank Andrea, the chamber president. Uh, I want to thank in particular, uh, Anne-Marie, uh, the CEO of Fingal County Council and Emer. O'Gorman uh, for their, the uh, Director of Economic Development, um, Tourism, Culture, Tourism and Cultural Development. Mouthful. <laughs> I have to look up my notes to get it all in. <laughs> so <laughs> so uh, for, for the presentations this morning, uh, I want to thank all the people who, who signed into this. We've well over 100 people signed out here this morning. Uh, we've lots of questions. We're quite prepared to deal with any questions and we'll feed them back into both Anne-Marie and Emer. Uh, over the next couple of days if somebody's got something they feel wasn't answered either sufficiently or they didn't think of asking at the time. Anyway, if you have found this event useful, if you've learned something, uh, let us know. There's a form at the end of this and we'll, we'll receive it. Uh, to support our work, the Chamber, uh, and to allow us to keep hosting all of these type of briefing events, please consider the Chamber membership or recommending it to those in your network who you may feel might be interested. Uh, as Andrea mentioned earlier, Fingal Chamber helps businesses of all sizes to grow and develop by providing members with opportunity to influence policy, connect with businesses and professionals, upskill their staff through our uh, Fingal Chamber skill net, which is a very vibrant and progressive skill net uh, that we operate here through the Chamber, and also to promote your business and trade internationally. Uh, if you want to check, uh, check our upcoming activities, please check the website, Chamber website, fingallchamber.ie, uh, to find out more. So thank you to everybody. Thanks again for joining us. Stay safe. August Slonga Fall.